welcome back to part two of the 2016 Smark Out Moment Awards. The Smarkies are continuing on. When we did the Technical Skills Awards in part one, we're going to continue on here with the Writing Awards, which some of those from the past have been uh, pushed off into a brand new category that we're going to get to in the future, the programming uh, side of things. But one of the ones that we've been doing for the entirety of the times that we've been doing these Smark Out Moment Awards, which I think that this is the seventh one, which is making me feel pretty old, is the best and the worst catchphrase or a slogan award. So it could be something that they say, or it could be something like the 999 for the network, any of those kind of things. There's a big long list on the website, or actually there's not a big long list on the website, I don't think so, but a big long list for my uh, notes at the very least. Everything from Welcome to the Wasteland to Daniel Bryan Yes to the Kurt Hawkins facts and that kind of crap. So I went with For My Best, essentially a four-way tie it's basically just jericho is written yep. down <laughs> <laughs> yep. because he had so many good ones this year i loved the whole it thing that had so much mileage out of it i really loved at the beginning of this whole character where we just did quiet 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 that made me fucking crack up uh drink it in man love that one and all the variations he's done on that but if i have to pick one above them all it's, you just made the list. <laughs> so fucking good. On the complete flip side of things, the absolute worst, by far, nothing else is in contention, is when the club adds ski to the end. It's like, oh, you know, like, we're going to go and get a hamburger ski and all that. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck whoever created that. It's not funny. It's not catchy. I got to type it as hyphen ski. So it looks awkward. You all need to die in a fire. <laughs> so best and worst catch race is looking at the year. What do you guys got? Who wants to go first? Who wants wow. to tag in? Go for it. Sean? Who's going? I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. <laughs> I thought you said that you uh, would. For, uh, for, for best, for best, I've got the face that runs the place, the champ that runs the camp. John AJ Cena? Styles. I love it. I love it. It's like the best uh, for me. That shit needs to be on a t-shirt. I would buy that shit. For worst, I'm going with Roman Reigns. I'm not a <laughs> bad guy. I'm not a good guy. I'm the boring guy. <laughs> Just get the fuck off my television. <laughs> fuck you. I would, you know what, right? Harambe would be a better replacement for the <laughs> All right, there, I put it out there. Bring back a Rombi. I don't think that he would do good catchphrases or slogans. He's not Coco, where he could sign language. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Dace or uh, Kalen, who wants to go next? I'll go next. Why not? I have to agree with you, Tony. I had a split for Jericho for different ones. Number one has to be the list. You just made the list. That's by far the best. I think you for, did forget about Stupid Idiot. That was one I Oh, that is it. Yeah, Stupid Idiot's a great one. Although, honorable mention has to go out to Goldberg. You're last! That was pretty cool when he said that. As far as worst catchphrase, I had something else, but I gotta go with Ski. That <laughs> I forgot how terrible that is. I, I had to change my opinion when you brought that up. That is terrible. What was your other pick? Roman Reigns' is Believe That. Because it is so boring and played out now, and I'm just sick of it. And people don't believe it. No. Dace, what you got? Slogan and catchphrase. So the best has to be the Drink It In Man by Jericho. Only because I use that every day now. Whenever I finish something or accomplish something that is obviously superior to those that have been in the room with me, I go, Drink It In Man! <laughs> I have done it so many times at work, I'm surprised I haven't been fired yet. Uh, the worst has to come down to... I, I really hate Roman Reigns, so the belief that was really ignoring, like, uh, really annoying. And the fact that the tribute to the troops, they kind of played into it and said, hey, do you, do you believe that? And he went, nah, I, I hated it even more. F fucking Roman Reigns. Hate it. So you told you Harambe. Yeah, <laughs> bring in Harambe. Takes out for Roman. It's not going to be as catchy, right? Wouldn't that be Seth Rollins? <laughs> ah! I get it because his dick was out. 
the best and worst gimmick of the year. That's their characters, essentially. And no, it should be no surprise about this one. The best gimmick of the year, Chris Jericho. The fucking list thing, man. I did really, really like Free Agent Heath Slater. And I did really like a lot of what the New Day did. But Jericho just surpasses to everybody. And my worst, I really uh, hate Stuttering Gold Dust. I really hate the Titus O'Neil brand. But you're going to have the Shining Stars give out fucking pamphlets for Puerto Rico. That's the best thing you can think of in 2016 for wrestling characters is travel agents. Awful. Kayla, what you got for best and worst gimmick? For best gimmick, also, I'm going with Jericho. I'm not sure if I can narrow it down to just the list, though. I have to also give mention to the scarf, the whole best friends with Kevin Owens. That whole package I, think if I, I kind of put together. Yeah, I, I'd have to say if I had to pick one of those aspects, it'd be the best friends, the Jericho Owens best friends. That's the best gimmick. As far as worst gimmick, Man, Shining Stars, that's a good one. But I'm going to have to go with Make Darren Young Great Again. Like, really, who gives a shit? And uh, Dace, what you got for gimmick? I I agree with Jericho. Drink it in, man! And uh, I, I'm going to have to agree with Kaylin on the worst. I, I just cannot stand. Why did I just blank out? Darren Young? Darren Young. Yeah, I can't stand it. it there was, like, so much potential. Especially with Trump winning. Like, could have took off with that and you still <laughs> lost. Like, come on. So much to capitalize on. Fucking Linda McMahon had to get a cabinet position. That's what screwed up Darren Young. <laughs> and Sean, what's your best and worst gimmick? Uh, best, I've also gone with Chris Jericho. Because it's the easy answer and I can't think of one. Crossing and uh, worst, worst gimmick, I've gone with Cesaro. A.K.A. The Clark Kent gimmick that he's got going on. Well, it's supposed well, to be a James Bondish <laughs> thing too. Like James it's a weird Bond crossover. It's so weird. Yeah. Is it, because they call him the Swiss Superman. So you know, I, I was just you know, some two, like, two and two together, the suit and everything. It's just fucking stupid. Just, just stop. Just stop with the suit. Stop with the elegance. He's, you can't put a suit on a skinhead and claim he's elegant. <laughs> I'm sorry, but no. Skinheads are like escaped convicts or some shit. <laughs> They're gonna make Cesaro great again. I like how because I, he's bald, I, he's immediately a skinhead. <laughs> I, I I completely forgot about Darren Young. That's that's not what I'm So it's Darren Young as well, because <laughs> fuck, it's Darren Young, and he probably raped me or something. So the <laughs> oh, gosh, skip past that. that <laughs> <laughs> the best and the worst heel or face turn, which means that you could technically have a best heel or best face, worst heel, worst face. I'm not gonna do one for both of them. Fuck that. I went with the best was the New Day turning babyface because that seemed like it was a natural thing for them to do, and it ended up becoming the best part of the year for them was when uh, when they were babyfaces, not when they were heels. So very happy to see that they did that. The worst. I can't decide yet between Ryback turning heel or Natalia turning heel. I, I When I look back, Ryback turning heel was such a wasted opportunity. But then I look at Natalia, and she talks about her fucking cat. That's what she's doing as a heel, is saying you should sign up for my cat's Instagram. So I'm leaning more towards Natalia on that one, but I'll make my final decision on probably the 30th. So this will be uh, uploaded well beyond that point. You'll ch- have to check the website when it comes to that one. But uh, Kalen Hill and face turn, what you got? All right. For my face turn, I'd have to say the best was the one that happened most recently, or at least most recently on my list here. Neville turned heel at Roadblock. That was pretty great when he came out. So I'm hoping good things are in line for him in 2017. I was really happy to see that. It's the best thing that he's done since he's on the main roster. As far as the worst turn, Seth Rollins turning babyface after being screwed over by Triple H. I think Seth Rollins worked well as a babyface when he was with the Shield, but on his own, I don't think it's working. On his own, I think he should be a heel. So I got to go with Seth Rollins for worst. Sean, uh, for uh, for best, I've also gone with Adrian Neville's heel turn, and uh, worst, I've gone with Carmella because I currently don't know whether she's heel, face, heel, or face. She was heel last time I watched, but now she's doing this thing with James Ellsworth, which, which is uh, which is dodgy and weird. And James Ellsworth is a very lucky man if he gets to have an on-screen relationship with her. You know what I'm saying? Yes, we know what you're saying. <laughs> Dace. 
I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> wink, wink, uh, nudge, nudge. The uh, the worst, uh, the Usos. I didn't care. They turned heel and fuck them. Who cares? Uh, the best, even though it's technically the worst, Chris Jericho turning heel. It's the greatest thing that's ever happened to this company. Is when he would stop pandering to the crowd, doing the yeah, baby, and turned into what we have today, the gift mm. of Jericho. So we have the best and the worst comeback of the year, which is only a temporary comeback, not the people who came into the mix and stuck around for a while. So that's, you know, you're not going to have somebody like a Brian Kendrick. He's just a part of the roster now. He doesn't really count. This is going to be anybody ranging from Tatanka making an appearance at WrestleMania. We have uh, Mick Foley doing a little bit here and there, but he doesn't really count all that much. But Shawn Michaels and Steve Austin were a part of that WrestleMania thing, so they do count. Vicky Guerrero popped up for a minute, that kind of a thing. Well, oh, shit. Do you have Mick Foley down or something? I have Daniel Bryan. Change in, change in. Yeah, Daniel Bryan doesn't count because now he's a part of that authority figure uh, category. My best was senile Teddy Long, where he was came out on the June 6th edition of Monday Night Raw, and he was like, I want to <laughs> end up was. being uh, the general manager, and we're going to put you in a disqualification match. And it was like, the fuck's that mean? <laughs> And Stephanie's like, what the fuck are you doing here? Can you just go? And he's like, oh, I'm going to do my thing and starts dancing, but there's no music and all that. Like, <laughs> that made me crack up. I love how they were, instead of bringing him on as like a real legitimate candidate, it was like, yo, let's bring Teddy Long in, but let's show that he's a fucking nut job now. Like, that's great character development. But the worst, Bret Hart at Payback. Oh, yeah. That dude clearly did not want to do it. And he just had this sour puss look on his face the whole time. It was pointless for him to show up and do that whole thing with Ric Flair and all that. If you're not going to put anything into it, and that's your only appearance you're going to make the entire year, just stay home. Just be a bitter old man staying at home if that's the case, you know? So that pissed me off because I always really, really liked Bret Hart. And I'm always like, oh, man, Bret Hart's coming back. And he always just phones it in. So, God damn it, Bret. Bret! <laughs> He's a good guy, okay? <laughs> oh, he's better than an asshole, Shawn Michaels. <laughs> yeah. Dave, so you got for comeback? Uh, best, I'm going to have to go with John Laurinaitis. He goes over to the Raw podium and goes, I'm going to give back the people power. And when Shane told him no, he walked over to SmackDown. <laughs> and was like, oh, I'm going to give SmackDown the people power. <laughs> John Laurinaitis was the man. And he is. Yeah, they need more Johnny A's. He's the um, best choice for best comeback of the year. <laughs> the worst has to go probably to Bret Hart, because fuck that guy. <laughs> John? I was still thinking, uh, come back to me. All right, Kayla. <laughs> got All a right. year to figure this out, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, best comeback, I got to go with Shelton Benjamin. Oh, no, wait. Aww, uh, that's sad. Got to go with... Got to go with Emelina. Oh, wait, she hasn't come back yet. Uh, no, seriously, I got to go with Goldberg. Come on. I know I said before I gave him my overrated one, but how fucking awesome was his comeback? Does that count since he's sticking around doing another match? I don't know. That counts. If not, I'll he only, Teddy he only did one match. So. All right. Well, yeah. Uh, for worst comeback, Kenny and Mikey from the Spirit Squad. What? I was never a fan of the Spirit Squad to begin with. And you when they came drugs, back, sir. I'm like, yeah, fuck those guys. I can understand Mikey. <laughs> Kenny's good. All right. One. All right. Yeah, that, that's just sold me on the best comeback, by the way. <laughs> I'm, going with, I, I, I'm going with Spirit Squad because my ex-girlfriend didn't know who the Spirit Squad was at the time before they made the return. So I was telling her all about how Dolph was in the Spirit Squad. And she's like, who the fuck is the Spirit Squad? And then the next week, then they, they reappeared on SmackDown. And I was like, look at that. Look at that perception. There we go. And worst comeback, I'm going to go with Bret Hart because fuck that guy and his testicles. <laughs> <laughs> fuck him right in the testicles. So we have so, yeah, more testicles. options this year for yeah. improvement in a division than we've ever had. We have the Legends, the main event for Raw, SmackDown, or NXT, the mid card for Raw, SmackDown, or NXT, the tag team for Raw, SmackDown, or NXT, the women for Raw, SmackDown, or NXT, the enhancement talent for Raw, SmackDown, or NXT, or the Cruiserweight division. Holy shit. But it's the biggest upgrade and the downgrade for the division of the year. 
and I went for biggest upgrade, the cruiserweight, because we didn't even have a cruiserweight division last year, so that's a big upgrade as it is. But our memories of that division, the last time we saw it was Hornswoggle as the last champion, and now Ugh. it's fucking awesome. So that's a huge step up. But the downgrade, man, I hate to say it, the NXT women's division, once the draft happened and they took, you know, even to a certain extent Nia Jax, but they got rid of Bailey a little bit afterward, Alexa Bliss, Carmella. This year uh, we had Becky Lynch and them that were in the 2015 range. They aren't a part of it anymore. Uh, Sasha Banks isn't a part of it anymore. It, we basically were left with Asuka and nobody to challenge her. I mean, Liv Morgan and them, they're on their way up. Billy Kay is looking nice and all that, but they're not in comparison to what they used to be. So the NXT Women's Division took a hit this year. That's a shame. Uh, let's go first. Well, you guys tag in. I'll go first. Um, oh. All right, this, this can go first. HB4 well, TV. The, I'm, not, I'm younger than you. No, you're not. You're older than me. Am I? I don't know. I'm 27. Ah, oh, fuck me. The biggest upgrade <laughs> had to go to the NXT main event scene. It got glorious this year. <laughs> as well as I got Shinsuke. And it just like NXT main event is killing it. Like if that was the main event of Raw or SmackDown, I, I think Raw ratings would be a lot better. Um, the biggest downgrade, hey, I agree with Tony, the NXT women's division. They went from having like Bailey, Charlotte, Sasha, all these girls, and now all of a sudden it's Ahsoka, and we have to go Ahsoka. get Mickey James. Ahsoka Tano? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ahsoka. Uh, and now we have to go and get Mickey James because there's no one else that could possibly face her. So they. Uh, and Mickey's not even hurt. sticking around. She's going to SmackDown. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're, they're kind of screwed because I don't know any other women in that division. Uh, who was the one that was it Sean? That was me. I'll go next. Okay. Or last. Uh, I agree with you, Tony. I think cruiserweight division, biggest upgrade. The cruiserweight classic was fantastic. I still have high hopes for 205 Live. I don't really like how they're using them on Raw, but we'll see how it works. And as far as the biggest downgrade, I got to agree with you guys again. NXT women's division, we had so many star key players, and now it's kind of. I hate to say scraps, <laughs> no disrespect to them, but it's not <laughs> what it was at the beginning of the year. It's really, really taken a hit. John, did you go? Uh, no, I haven't gone now. Okay. Uh, I've gone with the biggest upgrade in the in the division. I've just gone with the sp entire SmackDown locker room. It's just the whole draft pick thing. I think SmackDown has come off a lot better than it was this time last year. That is true. And can I actually watch it now? Yeah. I actually nah. prefer it to Raw. And uh, the biggest downgrade, I it's, it's a full house, lads. I've gone with NXT Women's Division as well, considering the NXT Women's Division is just Peyton Royce. So I think the only awards so far that we've all picked have been Jericho being fucking great and the NXT Women's Division being a disappointment. I think that's the only one that we've had all four for the same votes for. That's pretty interesting. Drink it in, man! Yeah. Now, we don't have a most and least shocking moment of the year like we used to because I realized how dumb it was to have a least shocking moment of the year award because <laughs> every year we were like, I don't know, fucking Cena wins. <laughs> you know? So it's just the most shocking moment of the year awards. And I'm going to read off my honorable mentions here because I think some of these are not going to appear and uh, I'm going to keep some of them on the hold just in case people are going to mention them. But I do think one that nobody's going to mention, which I almost gave the award to, Titus O'Neil kisses his son on the mouth. Mwah. That was very <laughs> shocking. I did not expect that to happen. I also assume that nobody's going to have Samoa Joe wins the NXT title at the Hal Show. I thought that was pretty uh, shocking. And another one that maybe might be on somebody else's list. I don't know. I have three other ones here. But uh, Shaquille O'Neal appears at WrestleMania. I was really surprised about that. But my actual pick for the most shocking moment of the year was Roman Reigns being suspended. Did not see that yeah. coming. Yeah, I hadn't even thought about putting that on my list. That was a huge shock because I thought it was just fake when everybody was reporting it. I'm like, oh, this is bullshit. This is going to be that whole John Cena died or uh, what uh, Sean would say, Seamus uh, fell in a bathtub with a fucking toaster and died. Like, And lo and behold, Roman Reigns suspended. Loses the title and everything. That was a big, big shocker for me. 
So I'm sure there's some other ones on this list here, and if not, we'll go back and I'll do the other ones. But uh, who wants to go first for most shocking moment of the year? I'll go. My most shocking moment of the year was probably the most shocking thing that I've seen in the programming since Taker lost at WrestleMania. And I have to say Goldberg squashing Lesnar. That's as exactly quickly how as I have it did. written down. Goldberg squashes Brock Lesnar, another one that I had. That was shocking. So I got to go with that one by far. The shock master. He's going to win <laughs> somebody. Dace, what about you next? Enzo didn't die. When Simon got through him into the rope, pretty sure that guy was dead. And he made it through. So it shocked the hell out of me. <laughs> and they didn't fire God. So That's shocking, too. Yeah. They've jobbed him out ever since then, though. Gotcha, mania. <laughs> Sean, what's the most shocking moment of the year for you? I've gone the same with them as Caelan. The Goldberg it's, squash? Uh, just the Brian, yeah. Goldberg squash. I was thinking other ones that people might have brought up were AJ Styles debuting and Shane McMahon returning. Shane, no. I could see. Styles. Yeah, Shane, that's a good one. Styles, everybody kind of knew. Mm -hmm. Still kind of a shock, though. I, you know, One of those things where I was like, I'll believe it when I see it, because we hear all these things all the time. Like right it now, there's a rumor going around better. that Kurt Angle is going to be in the Royal Rumble. It's like, until I'm hearing, bah, bah, da, da, bah, da, 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 bah, and it's not the Patriot coming out, then I'll believe it. <laughs> oh, that'd be glorious. No, I've heard that rumor too, and even if it does happen, I'm still going to mark out. Oh, same. Sound fucking A. Yeah. Because I feel like that rumor pops up every time around this year. Because I don't know how he timed it. I feel like his TNA contract always ends around big events. Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah, Kurt Angle's coming. And they're like, no, nah, fuck that, Bill Pop, an idiot. Well, there's going to be more attention to that this year because we don't have Wade Barrett to throw out the rumors that Papa Shango is returning. So. <laughs> <laughs> no! Maybe Papa Shango will come back anyway. It'll be like the first time that you didn't mention it. Ah, there we go. Papa Shango, Papa Shango, Papa Shango. Which, uh, which wrestler died this year? Anybody? China. Yeah, there China. you go, China. There you go. Most shocking. There you go. That's, that's not shocking. <laughs> Smart out moments of the year, the overall best and the worst things that have happened this year, the things that have made you the happiest to be a fan, the worst to be a fan, that kind of a thing, the most disappointing, whatever that you want to oh, classify I it change as. This one. Gotta change this one. I was happy about this one, not disappointed. Oh. Uh, my best smart out moment of the year award goes to The Miz flipping out on Daniel Bryan on Talking Smack. That was something that made me just really pay attention to Talking Smack, I figured that would be another thing I wouldn't bother watching, and I've watched it every single week because they did that. It was a great promo, and it spoke uh, a lot of truth, so I thought that that was fantastic. And my worst, Finn Balor has to vacate that uni uh, Universal uh. Championship. That was just such a gut punch, because the dude comes in, and it's all... We got this brand new title. It's ugly, but at least the champion's going to be cool. And then the next day, it's like, nap, you're stuck with a shitty title and no champion. It's like, fuck, man. Forever, the Universal Championship will be marred by the very first champion only holding it for 24 hours. That sucks. Mm -hmm. So who wants to go first? I'm assuming not Sean since he has to change. I'll go. I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll go. Oh, There's only, it only a quick change. <laughs> uh, I got three. I got three best for smart out. No one. I've got Seth Rollins returns. The pedigree Roman Reigns. I thought that was class. Daniel Bryan returns as SmackDown GM because I'm a big fan of Daniel Bryan. And Roman Reigns' entrance at WrestleMania where he got the boot out of the fucking building. <laughs> that was that was mm -hmm. fantastic. And props off to that crowd. I was just, I was booing along with them. I boo every night when he comes out, but, you know. I don't you were saying boo earns. I was saying boo earns. Uh, and worst, I've also gone with, uh, also gone with Finn. Yes. I, I, I feel sorry for that title. Not a single black guy has won that belt yet. That is true. Racist. <laughs> uh, Dace or Kalen? For my best smart out moment, I'm going to go with Dean Ambrose cashing in at Money in the Bank making it so all three S.H.I.E.L.D. members held the world title within, like, just a few minutes of each other. thought that was it's kinda cool. pretty pretty cool. For my worst, I was going to give it to Charlotte and Sasha Banks hot potatoing the Raw women's title back and forth, but you brought up Finn Balor, and I'm changing it to Finn Balor. That was terrible. Could that be all four of us, Dace? What do you got for the worst, at the very least? So the best was when... Zack Ryder won the Intercontinental title <laughs> at WrestleMania, and the worst was when they took it away the next fucking night. I was devastated. 
I was like, oh, yeah, they're going to do something with him again. And holy shit, they just stomp on my dreams. Because I had to smack Zach's dad and fuck Zack Ryder over. Fuck you. Now the broski's <laughs> hurt. This is a bad year for the Ryder man. Oh. And our final writing award is going to be for the best and the worst storyline of the year. The most uh, well-executed, interesting storylines versus the ones that nobody really wanted to watch. And they just fucking kept going on and on and on and on. My best was the brand split free agent Heath Slater angle. I thought that that was the best way to, to do something interesting during the whole draft because they ended that with him not having an actual roster to belong to. And it was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. They forgot about Slater. What, what are they doing? Are they going to f- release him? Like that kind of a thing. And then going back and forth, getting his ass whooped, turning that into an, uh, not an intercontinental, a tag team title reign and all that. The best thing that Slater's done in years. But unfortunately, we have a worst storyline. Goldust wants our truth to be his tag team partner. That went on months, it felt like, and it gave us some of the worst fucking segments. The stuttering art, uh, stuttering gold, gold dust thing I've said before is awful, and he kept doing that. And we've got the two of them finally becoming partners. And then we've had to deal with the golden truth ever since then. So, leading up to them being partners was awful, and then the end result was awful. So there was no good stuff that happened out of this at all. I absolutely hate the golden truth in so many ways. And that storyline at the beginning of the year, I was just like, when is this fucking thing going to end? Oh my God. And then it was like, Oh, it's going to end with them continuing to be together. Fantastic. Awesome. Great. Can't wait for that fucking group to be the only group that I want to see split up. Other than maybe Cesaro and Sheamus. I don't know. Best and worst storyline of the year. Who wants to go first? Days, maybe? I don't know. Let's go toss that out to the Wolves. I'll go first. The uh, the worst storyline of the year had to be the League of Nations. That is WWE's finest going. We've got four <laughs> main That's event people, and we don't know what to do with them, so let's make them a group and then do nothing with them. And then they all leave the company except for <laughs> How quick was it, too? They were like, we, we're going to kick out, what was it, Wade, I think? Wade, yeah. yeah. Wade was first. And they are like, he's not good enough to be in our group. That's only going to stick together for another two weeks. <laughs> and then immediately uh, Del Rio left. And then Sheamus went and teamed with another foreigner. And then, yeah, they, them doing their thing. Uh, the best <laughs> the best storyline has to be the Kevin Owens-Chris Jericho friendship. The way it started with Jericho making up a best friend and Kevin saying, I got your back, to now what we have today. This bromance that is phenomenal. I wish I had a bromance like that. We owe this all to Jim and Marvin Luter. Yes. <laughs> Who may or may not win an award later on. We'll see. <laughs> John or Kalen? I was going to give my worst to the whole Charlotte and Ric Flair thing. I'm glad Rick isn't on the TV anymore. But you bring up Goldust and R-Truth, and I had blocked out of my memory the whole vignettes with them every week of him trying to convince him to be his partner. And then it switched and he's like, okay, I do. And he was like, I don't want to be your partner now. That was so painful and it lasted for months and months. So that's definitely the worst. When you're talking about shitty storylines, this one literally incorporated a toilet. Yes, it did. Yeah. (laughs) It was really, really bad. As far as best also got to go with the best friends, BFFs. So many classics from this. And round us out here, Sean. Uh, for worst, I have gone with Charlotte and Sasha Banks. They're, they're just fucking awful. I just wish this story would just die already. I feel like you just hate women. Ah, uh, well, you know, women are bitches, isn't they? Women are cunts. And uh, best, <laughs> Jesus. For, for best, um, I've I've got to I got Heath Slater, free agent. And James Alworth fights for a contract. So good! James Alworth, 2016! <laughs> he is the new North Freedom, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, uh, Norv. Forgot about Norv. Norv. Alrighty, guys. Those are the writing awards. As I mentioned in the first part, all you gotta do is click on the next part for us to get into a brand new section, the programming awards, which are gonna be all the TV shows and all the other content like that from WWE. A lot of that branched off from the writing awards, which is why that's coming up next. So leave your comments below. Tell us what you think about our picks and what are your picks. As always, hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up as well. Share this, post anything else you want to do, whatever. All that stuff's all good and gravy. 
And uh, we're going to continue on in part three with the programming awards for the 2016 Smarkies. Stay tuned. Ah!